Hey everybody, sorry this one is so late. As you hear me talking about how work ate up all my time on whatever week we recorded this episode, unbeknownst to me, that was the start of a trend that just ended a few days ago, so now we should be back to a new episode every week. Thanks for sticking with us. Although I do, uh... It's worth mentioning. Yeah. <laughs> that Hans relinquishes all rights this week to, oh, well, look who decided to show up. After that little stunt he hey, pulled wait, Wednesday. No, 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 no. That was not my fault. After that I can't maneuver. control the things that happen at work. If this, if this, this makes was not it into my the fault. edit, dear listener, we're recording on Saturday night. We uh, usually you record on a Wednesday. My wife and I were watching the third season of The Witcher. We finally got around to it because season three, episode one, we thought was kind of trash. But then we started, we picked mm. back up again. Season three of The Witcher, pretty good. Sitting oh. on the couch, we're cuddling with Bailey. We're having a good time. We're like, you know, drinking some wine. She made like this nice, like, you know, chicken soup with like uh, dumplings in it. Like we're having like a perfect nice. Saturday. And then I leave that to hop onto a <laughs> recording to talk about listen. a good man from the year 2014 starring Steven Seagal. <laughs> Listeners, do you know how much we love you? The sacrifices I have to make to be here. Listen, and then the sh- that I get. Do you know how much we love you? Sacrifices. <laughs> You are the most would... beloved podcast audience, especially because we know each of you personally. If there is a definition of the word perfect, it is what I was doing before I was here. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't... One second. I need a bottle opener, though. I need to, to open this beer. I couldn't. I can't control the factors that kept me at work on Wednesday. I'm sorry. <laughs> we have the most loved podcast audience. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, because we know all of them personally. <laughs> <laughs> and have for like well over a decade at this point. <laughs> but you can't check your six. It's kind of like, you know, taking a screwdriver to a gunfight. What's happening? Just like old Tom, Tom. Okay. Who has a good man? Let me pee one more time. Is- <laughs> is this like four, the okay. third or fourth if you're gonna go do that i'm gonna grab another beer <laughs> i feel like i need it and hey it's not a, a work night i can we talked before about not having ice in our drinks and so i picked a drink that doesn't have ice but yeah. also like if i'm drinking beer i need a snack right right and i picked up these these Someone sent me these Parmesan crisps. They're delicious. Oh. Uh, however, like I put one in my mouth and then I saw it's Audacity spike. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized that's not, that's probably not a good podcasting snack. So that's right before we started to record. I'm, I'm, so I'm probably. Here, here. Wait, wait, wait. So I can't hear that. Discord does a really good job of oh, filtering it Oh, Discord does out. a great job masking that. Yeah. I can't hear it, but I'm sure Audacity oh, does. <laughs> it's just, it's like a field of thorns. <laughs> no, so I, I told you before, I have had nothing to do today. I've had a really chill Saturday. I had nice. a long work week, a lot of nice. late nights, so I've just been chilling. So I am right now like five beers deep, but that's over the course of the day with meals in between. So like, I'm not, you know, yeah. not crazy. Yeah, I'm just I'm feeling good, feeling pretty good. So uh, point is, I was hungry and I thought, oh, I'm going to grab some chips. And then I thought, oh, if we're going to record, <laughs> chips are the wrong choice. <laughs> hmm. So I've just been every every, uh, every couple couple sips of beer. I've been having a sip of water. Yeah. Well, so this beer that I'm drinking, it's one pint, nine point four ounces. So it's like okay. a pint and two thirds or so. Yeah. But it's eight percent. Ooh, chunky. Yeah. <laughs> that's the wrong word. <laughs> <laughs> chunky. No, that's that's definitely the word that people use when they're talking about the alcohol volume of, of beers and wines is chunky. <laughs> that's, that's how I would describe this beer. Chunky. <laughs> chunky. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's Chimay White for our listeners at home. It's made by Trappist monks. I think that's it sounds very actually. good. It's very, very good. If anyone would like to, if anyone is a beer fan at home, I like, I enjoy beer. I enjoy learning about it. If you're looking for Trappist beers, you must look for the Brown Hexagon. 
every authentic Trappist beer has a brown hexagon on the label. It's a controlled symbol. Oh, if it is not I made by Trappist monks, it cannot have the brown hexagon on it. So there are lots of beers out there that style themselves as Trappist beers or ales. But if it doesn't have the brown hexagon, it wasn't actually made by Trappists. It was just made in the style of Trappist beers. Really interesting, actually. I would never have known that. Oh, uh, the Catholics invented like half of all alcohols. <laughs> so they needed a way to regulate it. Yeah. So like Dom Perignon, <laughs> like champagne, Dom Perignon champagne. Dom yeah. Perignon is a guy. The Dom of the Benedictine Abbey of Perignon. Really? Yes. <laughs> The, the, the legend of the invention of champagne. This is almost certainly not true, but I think it's a cool story. <laughs> um, this is th- almost... You just, you're going to regale me with this, uh, this wonderful information, and I sit here like a simpleton saying, oh, that's really interesting, and then you say, well, it's probably a lie. Well, no, but- so the legend of the invention of champagne <laughs> goes like this. So okay. at, at Perignon... The Benedictine monks there, they make wine to support the monastery. They make white wine to support the monastery, which is uh-huh. a very Benedictine thing. Lots of Benedictine okay. like monasteries, they make something to support the the mission of the monastery, right? Yeah. And so in Perignon, they make wine. And so one evening, a few of the monks are downstairs turning the bottles. It's a part of the, the winemaking process that you, you have to turn the bottles as it ages in the bottle. Okay. And so they go down the line, and the, some of the bottles, when they turn them, the bottles explode. And the monks get very, very frightened by this. And they go to Dom Perignon. He's the Dom. He's in charge of like the monastery. And they say, Dom Perignon, Dom Perignon, you must come downstairs. <laughs> some of the wine bottles are possessed. You have to exercise the wine. <laughs> and Dom Perignon, being wise and intelligent, says, well, wait a second. What's going on? He says, the wine bottles are exploding. There must be a demon down there. <laughs> so he says, oh, wait, wait a second. And he goes downstairs and he sees the wine bottles and he sees like broken bottles on the floor. And he says, okay, brothers, pour me a glass of one of these wine bottles. Let's taste it before we make any rash judgments that it's like demons or something. And so they pour him a glass of wine and he takes a sip of it. And he says, whoa, brothers, wait. Do not destroy this wine, for there are stars captured in the bottle. And that's how we get Dom Perignon champagne. Um, St. <laughs> Bernardus Christmas Ale. That's nice, Zach. Yeah, this is what I was saying. This is the bottle I was talking about. That oh, way. nice. Good. Nice. What's, what is it that you have? You have a lot more variety. Uh, this is Chimay White. This is Chimay Sans Sans, made by the Trappist Friars of Chimay. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Okay, we got to talk, talk about this like It's only like one in... Do we really have to talk about this It's only like one and two-thirds pints, which isn't that much, nice. but it's also 8%. Ooh, nice. What word would you choose to describe that, Zach? What? <laughs> what if, Aaron just said. Ha- if a beer has a high ABV, what word would you use to describe that? <laughs> Strong? Is this like a quiz? Or... <laughs> the word Hans chose was chunky. <laughs> <laughs> well... No, we okay. We don't need to. I'm not trying to start a whole second court case here, but I think chunky beer and high ABV beers can be the same, but are not exclusive to one another. Mm -hmm. Because when you have like you know this thick like yeasty Trappist ale, like that is like a chunky. When you have a beer and it's like you're just drinking a loaf of bread, that's chunky, but that's not directly related to the ABV. Yeah. You can have a beer that is chunky, and you can have a beer that is high BV, but like the two aren't intrinsically linked. <laughs> yeah. I okay, get you. so we need to talk about this movie for like five minutes. This can be okay. a, really? literally a five minute episode. Hey, Hans, are you excited to scrub through an hour and 20 minutes of recording before getting to the actual <laughs> episode itself? Honestly, it'll be so easy because I can just hack out about, like you said, an hour and 20 minutes, and I can put that aside and I can say, well, I'm going to edit this differently. Mm-hmm. I'm just really enjoying talking bullshit with you two, and I don't want to talk about this movie. <laughs> the only reason I do this podcast is because I get on a video call with my two best friends. That's a good man. Yeah, let's talk about a good man. 
Directed Let's talk about a good man. His Yoni name is Jesus Waxman Christ. And starring and Steven Seagal, Victor did Webster. wonderful things. What? What? All right. What? You said we're talking what? about a good man. We have to talk. A good man. That's Jesus, right? We're talking about a good man, but also, unfortunately, <laughs> we have to talk about Steven Seagal, who is by far not a good man. Like, the even in the text of the film, from... not a good man. <laughs> Like yeah, in the text of, of the good film, man, uh, Stephen Skull is. Like Alrighty. actually, there is a character who calls him a good man in the movie, and Seagal <laughs> leaves that man on the floor bleeding. I'm so upset that this is the only movie where they directly like this is the only movie, or maybe not the only. This is one of the very few, very rare movies where they directly tie the title to Seagal, and it is like the least applicable. It's, it is. It, the, the only other one bad. I can remember is Glimmer Man, where they talk about he yeah. was just a glimmer in a sniper scope. But you never see that. Actually, yeah, we didn't actually ever see it. But that's it. like we don't see it. This one, we actively see things working against it. Yeah. He's more of a dangerous man in a dangerous man than he is a good man in a good man. Yeah. It's true. Hans, would he's you like to give us a plot synopsis? A, he's more I would. I... to Dark Territory than he is a good man. <laughs> <laughs> There is some dark territory in this man's <laughs> life, bad. let me tell you. It's bad. All right. <laughs> a good man. Steven Seagal plays Alexander. He, we start out with him and his buddy. <sighs> Who does not doing? matter. Who does not matter. They're, they're, they are on a mission where they're supposed to take out this target and another secondary target and whatever. He ends up going in and killing all the guys as he would normally. And at the exact same moment that he like saves everybody, kills the baddies, and the primary target or secondary target, I don't remember, the arms dealer, the guy that he was there to kill. The guy gets away in a Jeep, drives away. And then after that happens, after he drives away, then his like command base, whatever missile strikes the place that he was there at. And I'm yeah. sorry, I've had a little too much to drink to recap this in- intelligently. I don't think there's I don't any way know to if that's a possible intelligently, Hans. Thing. Yeah, it's after not, he yeah. he tells them that they are just there. They're the only people left are women and children. He tells them the only people left here are innocent people, innocent bystanders, and that they are not to use a missile strike because the bad guys have already left. And they're like, no, sorry, it's already happening. Missile strikes on its way, so he has to run in, grab a little girl, run out, and then the missile strike happens, and the girl dies. Like. Tra- tragic like this should inspire everything else that happens in the movie and it just kind of like doesn't doesn't matter at all his partner that was there doesn't show up again he's fine he lives whatever and then you you move into the first major phase of this movie with like a flashback to all of this happening it's like all like he's scarred from this event and you find out later that his whole goal throughout this movie was to to find the weapons deal the arms dealer that got away from this original mission that he was on. Like he's been spending his own personal time yeah. tracking this guy down. Mr. When Chen. in reality, like if you're actually trying to find justice, I don't know, maybe target your your commanders or somebody in charge who the drone strikes a location after you told them that it was only women and children left there. I don't know. Whoever wrote this movie is a complete idiot. Like it anyway. kind of sets up the US government as the bad guys in the prologue it here. It does. But doesn't does not follow through that. I'm gonna be very clear. No, this movie no. might have something to say if it was actually commenting on like United unauthorized like use of United States drone strikes affecting like innocent civilians. It does not yeah. have anything to say about that. No, this movie they, explicitly they, states that the United States government will send a drone to strike and hit innocent civilians, and then does nothing with it. Like that is not the point of the movie. No. Yeah. Like the, I, I, I was so unbelievably <laughs> bewildered by the beginning of this movie. Like I, I don't think I have ever seen a more confusing like six minutes in my I, entire life. I have a theory about that, but keep going. Okay, because I, I, honest to God, I can't. I, it was so unbelievably just like I can't think of words to say about it. It was so weird. It was strange. Didn't make any sense. Don't know who wrote it. Whoever did's an idiot. Um. It's it Keone was Waxman. written by Keone Waxman, who's the director, and Jason Rainwater, who seems to be best known for writing Lethal Weapon 3. This no, he the... was actually, no, he was in Lethal Weapon 3 as an officer. He did not write that. Right. I'm sorry, Keone Waxman, but you're an idiot. This I, is the third or fourth know, Keone man. Waxman movie we've gotten in a row. Oh, yeah. We are in the Jesus. Keone Waxman era. We are Big swing and a miss on this one. Yeah. <clears throat> so after that, we're in, it's Bucharest, isn't it? Pretty sure it's Bucharest. Sure. It's kind of vague. Also, the timing know. is super vague, and I have something to yeah, say about that. But it's, it's 
just bad. After that, it's like a flashback to this all happening. It's supposed to be some scarring event, and realistically, it kind of is, but not for the reasons that it should be. It's just a mess. So he walks out of his apartment to his neighbor (laughs) having locked themselves out of their apartment. So he asks, need some help? And they're like, yes, that would be great. Thank you. It's great to meet face to face. So he breaks into their apartment for them. He uses (laughs) like a... (laughs) Like a Dollar General screwdriver. Okay, no, 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 no. So it, it's a snap gun. This is a real thing. Like this is a real lock picking technique. You you put this this it's it's a, a shaped like a gun. You put this thing in there. It has like a little finger that goes into the lock, and then you pull a trigger and it like snaps it up really fast. Uh-huh. And the idea is that it snaps the arm up really fast and jams all of the pins up past their whatever rollover point i don't know lock picking terms but what that what's supposed to happen is that it shoots them all up very quickly and you can turn the lock but they play drill noises that's why i was doing this okay yeah so it's like a snap gun it's a genuine actual real life lock picking tool yeah but they play drill noises okay because i was confused because i was watching the scene and i thought this woman should be very worried that anyone with like an electric screwdriver can break into her apartment in like 15 (laughs) seconds so dumb it presented no issue to seagal to just so break breaks, into her apartment yeah he breaks into her apartment for her. they've never like formally met he doesn't actually even know that this person lives there but he breaks into her apartment for her, whatever so then you find out that she her dad owed the russian mob money and because of that she's indebted to the russian mob after he died and so her half brother from america comes over to help her pay off their her dad's debt and so he's like a you know the guy in the russian mob whatever you find out that seagal's killing russian mobsters and stealing money from them to try and flush out the arms dealer that got away from him all these years ago the chinese arms dealer Yes, sorry, the Chinese arms dealer that got away from him all these years ago. So he's trying to, like, draw this guy out by torturing the Russian mob, and it ends up working, I guess. But then because he's stealing the money from the Russian mob, the Russian mob doesn't have enough money to pay the Chinese arms dealer, and the arms dealer's trying to funnel money through the Russian mob. It's a whole big mess. It's so uh, just unbelievably stupid. The bottom line is the Russian mob can't pay the the arms dealer, so... I'm sorry, but the problem is whenever you just say, like, the Russian mob, I worry that you, like, anonymize it almost to the point where it just kind of seems like a kind of larger, like, you know. It's just one guy. This organization versus this organization. Steven Seagal helps this woman break into her own apartments. This woman's brother (laughs) has his money that it is very important that it gets there. (laughs) Steven Seagal steals that money, directly places that man... And then his two sisters, so the woman that he, <laughs> his Jeopardy. purported love interest, and her younger sister, who is a small child, Steven Seagal stealing like this $300,000 directly puts them into danger because they are like, our $300,000 is missing Actually, that we have to no. get to the guy who happens to be the guy Steven Seagal is hunting down. So that is why, spoiler, they kidnap the little girl and that's, that's the, his love interest to, yeah. is worried because of the money he stole. This is, it is yeah. his so fault. Also- Everything that happens in this movie is his fault. This is is a tiny thing, but it drove me up the wall throughout the entire movie. They keep saying dollars, and in the one example we have, they're euros. They show euros on screen and keep saying dollars. In every other Steven Seagal movie, they say dollars, and it's just inexplicably U.S. dollars. I have that in my notes, too. One (laughs) time. It's euros in Europe, and they keep saying dollars. It's See, always three hundred grand, three hundred thousand yes. dollars. But every time they show money in a suitcase, it's euros. And <laughs> it See, just I just I, this need. I just I need to say this wall. because it's drive. It's driving me nuts. He lets Lena into her apartment. Her younger sister Maya, Maya is like a seven year old girl, and then their older brother is Sasha. Steven yeah, Skull yeah. steals $300,000. He takes it. He has it the whole time. And then they're like, hey, <laughs> Sasha, we're going to like kidnap both of your like your youngest sister and try to kidnap the older sister and put them in harm's way and try to sell her to a pedophile because of this $300,000 that's missing that Seagal has the whole time and that he took. Right. Yeah. Nothing in this movie that happens is not the fault of Seagal's character. Well, that is, is the good man. <laughs> It, it, it is the fault of his yeah, character. That's what I'm saying. The movie portrays yeah, every- it as though it isn't. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Nothing yeah. here isn't his fault. Everything is his fault. 
Yeah, and no, he is so the he, good man. That is what killing. it's not just the Russian mob and this like you know Chinese arms dealer. It is directly this one man <laughs> that he directly <laughs> puts his own love interest into harm's way. He is killing Russian mobsters to steal their money to flush out the arms dealer who they are yes. like working for, but. In doing so, he gets his neighbor and her daughter, her sister, kidnapped, and then he has to team up with their brother to get them back. <laughs> kind of. He kind of has to kind let of. the brother do most of the action for the entire, like, you know, middle and last third of the movie, while Seagal just disappears. Right. Uh, but he has to come in at the end and save the day. The whole the whole thing is, Seagal ends up talking to the brother, the half-brother, and he says, basically, we have to get them back, but you have to do things, like, my way. You have to use a, like, I, I use a, it's like a, sh- it's like a scimitar short sword? Not a scimitar. It's a it's wakizashi. Like a is that a, what it is? I think it's a wakizashi. It's just like a short Japanese one-edged sword. Okay. See, I, I don't know these things. It's I'm like dumb, a side. But... It's like you would wear it with a katana. So katana is the long one. And there's a yeah. shorter one that's used for like self-defense. Yeah. Uh, and that's what he uses. The problem with that is for it no kind reason. of makes sense when he's using it for most of the movie. Because yeah. he is pretending, he calls himself like Guai Lo, yeah. which is, as we've discussed in a previous movie, Guai Lo, which is like, you know, white devil, like white ghost, like a translation yeah. of that. It's a pejorative. So, it's a Chinese pejorative for white people. But he is like writing on the walls like Guai Lo as if it's a name, like a non pejorative way of referring to himself as Guai Lo, but like as mm-hmm. Guai Lo with a space in there. And when he's using the sword there, it kind of makes sense because his whole scheme is that he's like trying to make it seem like it's somebody else doing these killings. But also at the beginning of the movie, when he's like literally in the United States Army, it shows him like fighting people and he pulls out this like he has his gun and then a guy gets up to him and he goes to like reach for something. And I assumed it was going to be like a combat knife, like with a serrated edge, like a normal United States Army, like, you know, Marines combat knife. And he pulls out this like little sword and I'm like, no, (laughs) no, you do not have that. That is not standard issue. So yeah. it does not make sense when he is at the beginning. It kind of ties in. They try to give it purpose. He later can't on. get rid of his weebishness. That no, his needs. weebishness is <laughs> he is Mall Ninja, like yeah. army oh, guy, and Mall Ninja in incarnate. <laughs> he is Mall Ninja incarnate with it's the leather so trench sad. coat throughout the entire oh, movie. Oh no, my it's God. we ha- we get the most egregious example in the finale. <sighs> but when he's doing these killings, he's trying to make it make sense. With a he's leather using the sword and he's lighting incense. Like he's trying to make it seem like he's you know throwing yeah. them off his scent, making it think it's someone else doing these killings. It kind of makes yeah. sense. They try to do something there. It doesn't yeah. really work, but they try something. Yeah, they try something. That's it. That's the whole thing. He he ends up like going there, and and the younger guy, the brother, he takes out pretty much everybody. And if this movie, well, we'll get there. He takes out pretty much everybody, and then Seagal has a one-on-one with the the arms dealer. The final finally boss. kills him. Gets the yeah final boss. Gets the younger sister back who was kidnapped, and they live happily ever after. And then at the end of the movie, the younger sister goes back to America with the brother Sasha. Then the older sister Lena, she stays in Romania with Seagal, and they there's a sex scene at the end where he is once again, once again, fully clothed, leather trench coat, and I mean like leather, like full black glossy leather trench coat <laughs> over this man fully clothed sex scene with this naked woman like bouncing up and down on top of him and that's the end of the movie it's supposed to be like a happy ending uplifting music and everything it's the weirdest and most disgusting thing i swear to god it's so strange so i do have one little bit of information that might help Go with this it. but i'm not actually sure if it does because there's a little bit of research that's needed to confirm this that i am not <laughs> going face. to do <laughs> So, the main <laughs> arms dealer bad guy, his name is Mr. Chen. He's played by Tai Ma, Chinese actor Tai Ma. Yeah. Now, and he actually Tai does Ma, a pretty good job. He's he pretty, does a pretty good job. He's, he's been in job. other Almost stuff. Almost everybody in this movie does a pretty good job. But, but, but like Tai Ma, he's pretty, he's out of all of them, he is the standout. He is well, oh, he's I been agree. in lots of stuff. Yeah. And you, you would probably disagree. recognize him. Like, listener, you would probably recognize him if you saw yeah. him in this movie. You he probably would be able to name... Yeah, he was in Rush Hour. Like, you might not be able to name, like, the thing that you saw him in, but he's been in a lot of stuff. He's been in a lot of TV shows. You know his face. He played a character named Chen in two episodes of True Justice starring Steven Seagal. No. Oh, come on. I have a theory. Are you serious? 
<laughs> I think, no. and I'm not going to confirm this because that no. would require watching True Justice, and I'm not no. going to do that. <laughs> is that no. a good man no. exists in the True Justice no. universe? No, no, that That's Mr. So Chen, disturbing. that Tai Ma is playing the same character. Sarah says no too. And one of the reasons, <laughs> one of the reasons that this movie doesn't make any sense, specifically in reference to Tai Ma's character, no. Mr. Chen, is because it requires two episodes of this TV show we no. didn't watch. And oh my god, it's the Disney homework before the Disney homework <laughs> no, this was movie even makes a thing. Sense. It just sucks. Well, uh. it's, so at the end of the movie, when they're having their showdown, they do the classic Seagal thing of agreeing to not use guns, and we're gonna have a sword fight now. The honorable thing. Well, of course. except so like. Uh, Seagal says, as a true son of insert Chinese name here that we've never heard, wouldn't you want to do this honorably, like one on one in a sword fight? And Mr. Chen's like, uh, of course, yes, yes, that's what I want. And so he gets out a sword, and then they have their like classic, like one swing of the sword, sword fight. They run past each other, and then Mr. Chen falls dead <laughs> in like grape jelly. It looks really bad. <laughs> Like, he makes all these references as if they've had, like, all these conversations and stuff no. in the past that have not happened in the movie. Like, they're referencing other characters, and they're referencing, like, Mr. Chen's backstory that we never got in the movie. And I think it was in those two episodes of True Justice, no, but no, I am not going to no. go check. True Justice... Aaron, are you familiar with what True Justice is? Tai Ma is credited in True Justice as <laughs> Chen in two episodes. Okay. <laughs> I, what year, wait, what year? What year did that happen in? 2011, I think. And this came out in 2014? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, two episodes in 2011. This isn't this True Justice is set in Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I this movie blows. And he plays it's... a different character. He plays Elijah Kane in True Justice. Right. But Tai Ma plays a character named Chen. I think more than likely Steven Seagal knows exactly one Chinese surname <laughs> and happened to cast the same guy with that same surname. I, think I don't think there's a, a reasonable explanation. Cinematic universe that explains the well, logical this fallacies is already of a good a, man. A stealth prequel to a different movie, right? Is it? This was the prequel to this is mm, wait, hold on. This is the prequel to one we've watched already. Yeah. This is a prequel to Force of Execution. And yeah, then ew. this is followed by Absolution. So I don't know if Absolution is a sequel to both <laughs> or if Absolution follows between a good man and Force of Execution. This is it doesn't prequel. matter. They don't make any reference to Force matter. of Execution no, at all. No, they don't. There's no link. No. It is only a prequel insofar as like if you look it up, the Wikipedia page says it's a prequel. There's nothing in the text <laughs> that establishes it as a prequel. No. We should do that. We should just claim. we uh, Pick any movie. Pick yeah. any Seagal movie that has no link Twelve, prequel. Well, I was going to say, not even just and, any Seagal movie. 12 Angry Men is a prequel to um, My Cousin Vinny. Tell me it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm saying I'm saying we're the resident experts on Seagal. No, Why don't we just pick any Seagal movie no. <laughs> that does not have a prequel or sequel and say yes, this is in fact a prequel or sequel to another Seagal movie that does not have a prequel or sequel. Why don't we just do that? Why don't I we mean, just say that, that? Why don't we manifest that into reality wait, no, and we could update the Wikipedia page we, to, wait, to, we could to reflect it? We, we could do that. There's well, nothing especially the early ones. That. Like you could say Mark for Death is a prequel for a Hard to Kill, and like. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> Why not? Tell me it's not. Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> this fits in with our theory that he was like the same officer just being bounced between Yeah, every movie in which he's yeah. a cop, same same universe. No, yeah. I I love what I think we should go and update all of the Wikipedia pages for all those early movies to say that exact theory this is like when we pointed out the weird editing of like the guy and we found out it was like our one polish listener that updated the wikipedia page we should like <laughs> stealth update one of these to say this movie is a prequel to another one and then just as soon as someone else points it out we're like eh, sorry we, you know we had our fun yeah, <laughs> yeah no, this I one is know. not a prequel this, it is <laughs> this movie sucked it was so stupid it was so on it didn't make any sense the whole I the whole point they say numerous times, and then the name of the movie also implies that Steven Seagal is, in fact, a good man. But everything that happens in this movie is his fault. Everything. Every single bad thing that happens okay, so his fault. I Can I point out something that just tipped me off to how bad this movie was going to be? The fr it's Do the it. first line of the movie, the first spoken words of the whole movie. Well, that's impressive. Do it. So you get a voiceover from Seagal who says, and I quote, <laughs> 
I listened to it twice because I had to make sure I got this right and I wasn't just like misunderstanding. He says, quote, there is no darkness without light, yet there is light without darkness, end quote. That is exactly backwards. <laughs> what? <laughs> backwards from what? Where is he that He says, from? there is no darkness without light, yet there is light without darkness. There is absolutely darkness without light. That's the definition of darkness. Oh, this is just... <laughs> mm. <laughs> Just definitionally, he's wrong. Just definitionally wrong. If he said there is no, <laughs> like, there is no darkness without light. Yet there, there is, is light no light darkness. without darkness, but there is darkness without light. If he said that, yeah, he'd be correct. there is yeah. darkness without light. That's the definition of That's darkness. That's what darkness is. That's darkness. <laughs> <laughs> I just yes. want to point out this movie, the absolute, the highest peak of criticism, like the way this movie is actually better than every movie we've watched, like over the last like 10 weeks or so. And then like the absolute lowest low, the absolute lowest low we already covered. The absolute lowest low of this movie is that everything that happens in this movie, the aggravating instance, like the, ev- this is all his fault. And he, yeah. the movie everything doesn't seem to recognize that movie. it is his fault. If he got to the end and he's like, Hey, I'm really sorry. Like, you know, I didn't mean for your sister to get caught up in all of this. That would absolve this movie of most of its sins, but it does not. <laughs> the universe of this movie does not act as though it is his fault that everything that happens oh. when it is. The highest praise I can give this movie is that the beginning scene that lasts for 10 minutes and you talk about how his partner doesn't come back, like the beginning scene that doesn't really connect to the movie, somewhat connects to the movie more than like the last 10 ones that we've watched. <laughs> <laughs> because have, like, like in the beginning of this movie he is going after this chinese arms dealer who continues to be the main antagonist for the rest of the movie <laughs> that, yes. like i watched this and i was like there. wait the 15 minute short film that preceded the movie actually relates in some way <laughs> praise praise the lord hallelujah there is some there, way that the beginning there opening was segment, the cold open like sets up and pays pay off. off normally it's completely unrelated in this case it's like 50 percent related <laughs> that's like the lowest bar to clear there was setup and payoff there's at least one character from the prologue that actually comes up later okay but just picture Other what you gone. would not even what you would give praise for a mo- another movie doing. What you would just baseline expect another movie to do, this movie does. <laughs> and that is more than you can expect from most of these. I'm not saying it deserves praise for the fact that like the opening sequence is related to the rest of the movie. Because <laughs> normally that goes without saying. But now it very much goes with saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so and then I can in light of that can I just point out some like weirdly incompetent things that happen throughout the movie oh yeah yeah that's the rest that's the rest do. of the movie that's uh, every other part of the movie so the first thing that bothered me so as I talked about like the the first the opening line of the movie is a voiceover from Seagal but you get like a image of his face saying that over like some footage of helicopters I think yeah it except sucks. they're shot it in different awful. frame rates <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you have like it semi, looks like it's a still. He's yeah, not semi-translucent <laughs> Seagal head over some helicopters <laughs> flying in the background. Except the helicopters are shot in like slow-mo. And he shot at like 12 frames a second or something like that. So you have like this stilted Seagal image talking at you while these smooth slow motion helicopters come at you. He's not, he's not talking at you. It's voiceover uh, from him. But the like picture of him that you see, the really slow, weird video of him that you see, his mouth isn't moving. No, it's very strange. <laughs> No, I last episode in episode 36 force of execution I talked about how weirdly like the opening frame of that movie is actually like good if you just took that frame by itself and like hung it on the wall I would think it's like pretty good photography it has nothing to do with the movie it's not good cinematography because it doesn't actually connect to like the larger meaning of the film but individually it is like a good still frame the like opening still frame of this movie of a good man is like (laughs) is awful it is like the original <laughs> sin like it is terrible it is these two helicopters and then seagal's face just 50 percent opacity over them we have gone from like the best <laughs> opening shot of a seagal film to like the worst opening shot of a seagal film right and here. then you watch it's it so in motion odd. and it's just jarring it because they're shot at the different frame cinema. rates it's it's it so very odd. weird actually what you should picture is um apocalypse now like that scene where i want to say it's um the the guy it has like the he's in the hotel and like the ceiling fan is on and he's mm-hmm. laying there and it kind of has that like opening monologue yeah this is like the exact opposite of that <laughs> yeah well and then so throughout the entire like opening sequence like the prologue i'm gonna call it i think they just how many different 
pejoratives do we have for oh Muslims? My God. Dude, Ugh. so it bad. was horrifically oh. offensive. Oh, so bad. <laughs> like they no. just came up. I think they came up with like new ones. Like some of no. these I haven't no, even they heard were before. Slurs for this one. For sure. But that part did have my favorite line. Can I go ahead with it? Tread lightly. Tread lightly. Well, no, I don't <laughs> think it has. I don't. I mean, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think I don't know, pejorative terms in it. He says to his partner when they are like they they get to the place they're going to. They see all the people around this compound. He says to his partner just out of nowhere has nothing to do with anything it's it's the phrase where you would say to your buddy like oh man we're in the thick of it now instead of saying that he says we got the chicken sandwich now boy what does that mean what does no, that mean I... we got the ch- and he's he see like he rolls over the word we got the chicken sandwich now boy what does that mean what is that hans what you reminded me of is a thought i had while watching this movie is like seagal always does his seagalisms but i think they are particularly egregious like for some reason exactly like what you're saying like exactly what you're reflecting on like what does this even mean his random like things that he says for some reason they're so much worse whenever like he's cosplaying like military yeah yeah because like we're watching this movie and he's He's... like oh dog if i'm if I'm going to f*** this burger sideways, I don't want to get pickles on my dick. And everyone else is like, Roger, yes, sir. Over and out. Roger, yes, yes, yes. Okay. I hear you. It's like, over and out. It's like he's And they have to take him seriously. Yeah. yeah. It's like he's ad-libbing this and the director cuts and says, do you, you yeah. want to take that again? And he says, nah. no, that's perfect. But like, that he does perfect. this in every movie. I'm going to do another take. He he does the like same trash every movie, but here he's like, oh, <laughs> these honkies are really grilling on my nerves. And they're like, yes, <laughs> well, sir, Roger, over and out. Yes, we hear well, you loud and clear. And he has to come up with a reason that there yes, are only sir. two of them. So he has yeah. to like ad lib a reason that they don't have a SWAT team of like eight people doing this like hostage rescue mission slash assassination. And why it's yep. only two guys. There, I think the real reason is they couldn't afford more than that. <laughs> but he has to come up with a story reason, and his story reason is, I don't know, I'll make it up on the day. He's, he said, we're supposed to have a team of 12, a minimum of six, and we got two people. And yeah. Like, what does that mean? A team of 12, but, also, but a minimum of six, and you have two? But their mission what? is to scout what? out a place that's getting drone striked, regardless right. of what they do? Yeah. Right! Like it's just so I unbelievably All, stupid. But also, you, I we didn't I say this just... in the recap, but they make this whole point when Seagal is sneaking in and the other guy is staying back and being his sniper with the AK. That Seagal sneaking in and the guy's like, <laughs> "Hold on, there's a guy approaching you. I can't take him out, or I'm gonna wake everybody else up in here." Okay, he's six meters away, five meters away, four meters away, three meters away, and like Seagal like fisticuffs the guy, and then Seagal fisticuffs three and a half seconds later bursts into the door and just starts shooting his gun. Yeah. He's, they're like, yeah. oh, I can't shoot her. It's going to alert everyone. And then Seagal just goes in guns blazing. And then he alerts everyone. Even though, like, this quote-unquote sniper <sighs> oh, guy uh, with, like, a mid-range assault rifle uh, has eyes on the target. Like, he could oh, yeah. just Through shoot windows. him right there, and then everyone could go they home. They show it. But then after, so after the prologue, we get a time skip, and it says two years later. And then, like, a little later, we get another time skip, and it just says present day. <laughs> which at this point is like a decade later <laughs> you can't use two different trash. time scales in the same movie movie <laughs> oh my god also the use of subtitles in this film is ridiculous so sometimes like when the character speaks russian or something because a lot of the characters speak russian even non-russian characters will speak russian They'll give you subtitles. <laughs> and then every now and again, when they're speaking English, they'll put like stylized red subtitles yeah. on, the, on the screen. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which I was trying to so figure strange. out like what like They're was trying the... to go for a John Wick thing almost. Kind of. <laughs> like when Mr. Chen is giving like a time limit to the Russian mob, like you have 24 hours to get me my money. And you see on the screen like 24 hours to get me my money. And then later he'll say it again. He's like, you have 12 hours and you have 12 hours to get me my money i mean okay real quick though they were trying to do something real quick though it didn't work this movie came out august 19th 2014 distributed by lionsgate entertainments john wick the first john wick film it came out october 24th 2014 (laughs) oh wait it was distributed by summit entertainment i could have sworn this was a lionsgate film oh 
Oh, wait, wait, yes. Lionsgate Films purchased the distribution rights to the film two months before its release dates. Yeah. Ooh. So John Wick and A Good Man were both a Lionsgate film and came out within like two months of each other. Ooh. Wow. Brutal. So just imagine you went and you sat down. Not, you didn't sit down at theaters. You sat down at home and you brought the red box (laughs) of A Good Man home. (laughs) And then you didn't even know that like two and a half months later... John Wick was coming out. Yeah, <laughs> and would literally a... change action cinema forever. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got another skull movie. Yeah, sure, whatever. It's three bucks at the Red Box. Oh man, boy, I can't I wait till John this. Wick comes out like two months from now. I hated every moment of this. It was so frustrating to watch. You I said your favorite it. quote. What's your star rating, Hans? Oh man, so this is difficult because I think I gave Ticker and Submerged, and there was a third one that was actually pretty recent that I think fell down there those pretty better far. Be a half star. I think I gave those a half star. I'm so tempted to give this one a half star too, but it wasn't like it was a full movie. That's the problem. Like Ticker and others, on the, like, like on the scale, it's not the worst. Because no. it's if I could retroactively go back and give Ticker and Submerged and whatever that third one was, I can't remember zero stars, and then give this one a half star, I would. This it's right down there. It's right down there. Yeah, it is the title of the movie is I I can't drive this home hard enough. The title of the movie is a good man, and the only thing you see in the movie is Steven Seagal being the worst, like chopping but, people's like, limbs off. But there like, is, man. like, a priest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's another... These movies seem to, weirdly enough, priest characters seem to be fairly common, which I'm sure is very weird for you, Aaron. Except- but the priest does say, he's a... He's a, he's a good he's a tough no, man. No, no, this drove man. me completely insane. I absolutely lost my mind. Because the priest character is like, oh, but, you know... Because Lena, the Russian lady that he ends up sleeping with at the end while fully clothed in his leather trench coat... <laughs> Is like sheltering with the priest, and the priest is like trying to comfort her, saying, "Oh, you know, he's you know scary, and he does these dangerous things, but he's a good man. But he's a good. Man. He's like fundamentally a good person. <laughs> he he's trying to do good in the world. And then the very next scene yes. is the priest <laughs> yes. getting assaulted while Lena gets taken, and then Seagal shows up late, and yes. the priest is like laying on the floor of the church bleeding, yes. and Seagal comes in, he's like, "Where'd they take Lena?" And the priest is like, uh, I think they took her here. He says, okay, and then leaves. Like, this man is on the floor okay, but of the church bleeding to man. death. <laughs> okay, but hold on. Because I'd, I'd like to touch on that moment. I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah. Because this is another quote. And I won't I won't steal the quote if, if either mm-hmm. of you have this as your favorite this quote. Is, I already said my so favorite. Whatever quote. Hans is going to say, this is my favorite. I, I know he's going to say preemptively, I gave this one star, I, and he's about nope. to say my quote from the movie. I'll let you do it. I'll no, let you, you take ahead. it. You take the it. scene. No, go take for the it. Scene. This is your episode, Hans. Dude, yeah. I, this, I just about lost my mind (laughs) because i can't conceive of how this happened and made it into a a movie i I just can't do it i wrote down the timestamp and everything like i was so bewildered this happens at one minute 10 seconds and i'm sorry (laughs) god i'm one hour one hour one hour, ten minute, and twenty seven seconds into this movie, he says he he asks the priest who's laying on the ground like wounded, bleeding. <laughs> he says, "Where did they take Lena?" And the priest says, "They you know they took her, or whatever." I don't remember what he says because it wasn't, it, but it wasn't the part that I was paying attention to. And Seagal, for a solid five whole seconds just stares into the camera or or at the priest while the camera is staring at him he just stares there with this blank emotionless expression i dear listeners i know we use a lot of hyperbole here i know i'm guilty of that this is not hyperbole the man stares at this like dying priest on the ground for five whole seconds five i counted them out five seconds with the most dull like bored blank expression on his face like just stare and the camera captures all of it and then he says and i quote <clears throat> i'm sorry to hear that because now i'm gonna snatch every motherfucker birthday what 
what does that mean because we i like does he did he ab lib that on the day and then they were like dude you got we got to take another we got to do another take because you can't say that and he's like nah no nah, that was perfect what the what hell is, is that, that? <laughs> this made it what into the movie <laughs> oh my god we've talked about the nonsense. i was so bewildered we've talked about the nonsense like seagal lines like <laughs> when i was joking that he just said some nonsense they gotta be like yes roger over and out that here i <laughs> It feels like a dead horse, but I'm sorry we found a deader horse. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, because now I will snatch every motherfucker birthday is a new low. What does that mean? Every word in that sentence individually and combined means less than the previous word before it. And just and, and you have to take what is that, that supposed what you're... to mean. You have to take that. What what is that supposed to mean? You have to take that in con- in the context of the situation where he's staring at a dying priest who has who has been wounded by someone who came in and kidnapped Lena, and he just stares at them and then says that and then leaves. Okay, like I, I what this what this, is this move? What am I watching? This is a movie where Alexander Steven Seagal's character, the good man Alexander, a good man Seagal, the good says, man. I wonder how much he get you think he get more than uh osama bin laden got i'm gonna be sorry to kill his ass and that's not the worst thing he says because the worst thing he says is like word spaghetti just thrown onto the screen that we are expected to consume like the pigs we are at our slop trough now so I'm well i'm sorry quick. to hear that because i will snatch every motherfucker birthday what is this supposed to mean now do you see why i hated maximum conviction so much <laughs> It hates me. <laughs> this movie point, hates though. you. <laughs> nobody, but nobody cared. <laughs> this what, movie what nobody just said, said hates another line. You. What Zach just said, he says that to his partner in the very beginning, in like the flashback of the beginning yeah, of the yeah, movie, the first, like, where they're about movie. to take out the arms dealer. Well, and they just he have says like a that. back and forth of like different just horrifically racist terms. Well, no, 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 no. There was no back and forth there. He said those words. It was a fourth and fourth. Yeah. <laughs> he, he he said those words. What Jack? What Zach just said? Yeah. He said those words to his buddy, and then his buddy, and I quote, goes, "Oh," and that's it. <laughs> to be fair, like that's somewhat accurate. Like whenever you just hear, like when you're just walking down the street whoa, whoa. and you hear some like fifty year old guy just like say some like out of pocket thing, and you're like, "Huh, yeah," and then you just whoa. keep walking. <laughs> you're like, "Huh, yeah, that's like, crazy." Oh, whoa. I just. <laughs> I was so the entire. I was seething this entire. I could movie. have I was a team, so mad. I could have a team of Harvard linguists spend like fifty years trying to decode. I will snatch every motherfucker birthday, <laughs> and they would be no closer fifty years later than I am today to what this is supposed to mean. This is like the Rosetta Stone of not understanding human language. <laughs> If I could, some, if I, if we, if we encountered intelligent life outside of this galaxy, and we specifically needed to make sure that they like could not understand human language in order to protect ourselves, like we don't want them to learn how to communicate with us because that would put us in danger. I would you send would feed them, them uh, Stigall movies. I will, I will snatch every motherfucker birthday because then they would just say, "Well, that means nothing." Well, time to go to another planet or something. Uh, we- this is going to be the most bleeps of any episode, I think. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty bad. It's just, so, I can't... It's almost, it's just, almost impossible to talk about this movie without having to bleep out something. Well, because like, the highlights are the the mysteries behind these lines what that Seagal that mean, came Steven? up with on the spot. I mean, I so, uh, that line in particular, I'm assuming that means I'm going to go kill everybody. Like that's like it that's implies what that some sort of violence, but, but I don't it, like the thing is weirdly enough, it's like I know they talk about how like seventy percent of communication is nonverbal. Like what you say matters <laughs> well, okay, less but that's... than like your body language and your tone. Like that by... requires body language and tone. No. But like by <laughs> the um whatever amount of body language and tone we have, we are led to believe that he is like, ooh, I'm gonna go kill these guys. 
Yeah. By like the context of the movie, it's like his love interest is kidnapped. This priest is hurt. He walks in. The thing is, it's honestly like Mad Libs. Like it doesn't matter what he says. The yeah. entire filmic language leading up to here is leading us to believe that he is like, ooh, I'm going to go get my revenge now. So what he says is honestly irrelevant. Yeah. So he could just like say, he could say, wah, 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 And it would commu- <laughs> communicate exactly as much. We know he's yeah. going to go get revenge now. Like we know what it means. <laughs> It but the words movie. he says mean nothing. They mean less than nothing. They mean the opposite of anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we were given a hint when he said there is no darkness without light. I get I get the opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is indifference and we are given indifference. <laughs> yes. This is the indifference of cinema. <laughs> That was so bad. I don't. I don't so feel that anyone involved in this cared about any. Part no one of cared. It. One star. I don't care. It, I'm done. I. So I'm only going to disagree with that just a little bit. Okay. Because what the guy part did that someone played, care about? The guy that played Sasha, the brother. Okay, he cared. Who was? Yeah. Who was involved was with the mob? Brain. But he was only involved with the, the mob. Poor to pay man. Off his sister's debt. Whatever. He, as an actor, who I, I'm, I haven't actually looked this up, but I'm just going to take a guess. Victor Webster. Was, Stunt man turned actor, actor, like a martial artist. He's Be- like a kickboxer in black belt. Though. Yeah, he cared because if this move, this movie, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play script doctor, doctor for just a Ooh. second. Ooh. You, you yes, can, Ooh. you can correct me if I'm wrong. He was in the I Scorpion believe... King Four. He was in Sex Ooh. in the City episode to market to market. I believe that if this man was the main character of this movie, and you just removed Steven Seagal entirely or you made seagal the villain like oh obviously the arms dealer is the villain but like seagal killing the russian mobsters and stealing their money which forced the sisters to be kidnapped like you could tweak this just a little bit and make this guy the main character because he has the more interesting story he yeah. came over from america to save his family his his half sister who owes the russian mob money because their dead father owed them money so he's trying to save them and like work for the mob but he's like trying to be a decent person like he could be yeah. the good man conceivably he is actually he's the subjectively good man. so like there yeah. are multiple scenes where he there's a victim of the russian mob his job is to raise money for the mob like he's an enforcer like he goes to people's businesses and he's like, like collecting the protection money he yeah. collects protection money and you see it like early on his introduction is him paying personally out of pocket the yeah. protection money Wait, for someone on. else yeah, he's the good man. He yeah, is the good he, man. Yeah. He is the, the movie good establishes man. he's a good man. It does not yes, establish that so, he's a good man. Because he he's in the mob, he doesn't want to be in the yeah. mob. Like he's right. he's trying to get out as soon as he can, and he like skirts the rules of the mob in order to yeah. like help the little no, man. No, 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 like no, no, he no. is the right. good man. Scr- he's the good man. That's what I was Scripts saying. So if Dr. he were the main Hans character, Schreiner is in. He is doing house calls. He is. I got one. I got one of these. Where have you no, been? This you're, is good. If, you're 100% right. If he were the main character of this story and like the final fight, like maybe maybe not the final fight, but maybe the, the penultimate fight was between him and Seagal and he beat Seagal and he killed Seagal and then the ultimate fight was with him and the arms dealer to get his sister back. Like that would well, have been a good story. Because well, imagine he finds this guy that's like starting to like seduce his sister, and then he learns this guy is responsible for the missing three hundred thousand dollars that got his other sister kidnapped. Right. Ooh, I'm on the like, edge of my seat. Like Seagal is the the villain. Maybe not like the villain, but he's definitely and one he of say, the villains. Hey, we're against the same guy. And then you know this main character would say like, no, neither of you are on my side. Like I imagine, my imagine this. He is Guai Lo because he works for Mr. Chen. Oh, yes. That's why he's Guai Lo, not just because he's a weird... And like, he's just like pitting the Russian mob against themselves in order to yeah. distract from the larger target of Mr. Not Chen. Not be, just because he has a weird fixation with Asian culture. Well, he likes to appropriate things. That could things, also happen, I guess. But, but because like he's been hired by Mr. Chen to be like a hitman and enforcer to disrupt sense. the Russian mob. Yep. Also, and that's Hans, why he takes on the name Guai Lo. Also, yep. Hans Victor Webster, the guy that plays the main character in your cinematic debut, A Good Man, written by and directed by Hans Schreiner. Um, Victor, <laughs> who, I assume it would also, Victor Webster would still appear in this movie. He, he was job, in so yeah. an episode, a 2010 episode of Bones, playing the character Brad Benson in one episode. Really? Of Bones. <laughs> <laughs> it also always comes in... back to Bones. He was also in f- always. 42 episodes of Continuum. 
Yeah, that's fair. A, but he was in a one pretty good of Bones. sci-fi show. Uh, this guy, he put in so much effort to he this part, so and he effort. was actually very good, very convincing, and it just was all brought down. This is this is such a theme with all of these movies. No matter how good everyone else might be, we say it's. We say it's unbearable. We say it's just absolutely miserable to sit through because of Seagal. It's crazy. Like, this movie could have been He's a boys. decent movie if it was just tweaked just a little bit. If this guy was the main character, if Seagal's face wasn't on the poster. It's crazy. This has to be at least, like, the 15th movie where if you just remove Seagal or pivot Seagal into a supporting villain role, it is actually yeah. a somewhat decent Which movie. is what they did in Machete. Oh, yes. it worked. Yes, that oh there the we go. One. That's the exception that proves the rule. <laughs> that's a really good point. Because that's exactly what they did, and it worked, that, and that was that, enjoyable. This is we're not the first people to think of this. Vindication. No, we're Robert not. Danny Rodriguez Trejo watched Seagal movies and was like, wait a second. Seagal would work really well as like the villain of one of these movies. Yeah. Not as even as like the main villain, like, but like one much. of three villains. Dude, yeah. We're, we're, it only took, we what is this, episode 37? It only took 37 <laughs> episodes for us to hit the nail this on is the, the head. Only, because this is the analysis you get from the Seagal experts. It is the three of us <laughs> and Robert Rodriguez. Yeah. Well, so I think, it's, I, I don't remember, I know it was one of you two. I don't remember which one it was. But you guys both said very early on, like very early on. I'm talking, uh, I'm talking out for justice days. What oh was my. that, episode four? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Something sure. like that. You, one of you said that Seagal doesn't work as the hero he should just play he should play the villain who does wanton violence just absolute like murder spree because he like would be very good at both that. hands yeah yes just the just the like lean into the nonsense lean into the violence lean into the bad guy because yeah. he would play a good bad guy and he just doesn't, and that's part of he, why it doesn't work. I mean, in he's this not a good movie, actor. He is one but, of the bad guys. Well, and because you know what? Yes. Seagal could say, I'm going to snatch every motherfucker birthday, and Victor Webster could be like, <laughs> What? And then stab him in the neck. <laughs> and, like, it's fine. It doesn't matter if what he said doesn't make sense. He's, he's the yeah, villain. Yeah, Who cares? Actually, exactly. Like, he should just, I don't understand why he ha He just has to be the hero, and it doesn't work if he were the villain, like he were in Machete. Like, and, he like, he looked like he himself. was having more fun in Machete. He looks yeah. miserable okay, in this The part movie. whenever he's, like, has he the looks sword sticking miserable. out of his gut, and he's like, ah, uh, ah, uh, I, could, I could win this, but I guess I'm gonna just kill myself, like... <laughs> <laughs> that's the most fun he's had on set in like 30 years he looks for miserable sure. throughout this entire movie he does he, he looks irritated with everybody like i can't believe they're making me do this he's like but ah, this he's is, the one on the cover i'm just yeah. trying to do it's money laundering by and Roller. they dragged me out of my trailer again and put me in front of the steven, camera steven play the villain seriously he you would, had fun he doing that and it worked villain. way better just just commit to the the crazy violence no rules just out there being the insane person that you are in real life you would be a good villain it's just insane to me but no no He's what's his man. name the the brother what's his the actor's name uh victor webster victor webster <laughs> i'm also. so sorry victor webster because you were relegated to second place mm. you were relegated to the side also kick. he's like the third would not have been he's like the, the side third kick. good actor in a row that got relegated to side character and what yeah. was by it's all crazy. rights his movie also it's victor crazy. webster while you're listening hi victor nice to have you here um, I looked up the episode of Bones that you're in, the death of the Queen Bee. Sarah and I, my wife and I, we just watched that like a month or two ago. That was a pretty fun episode. <laughs> That's the one where they have like the creepy janitor that everybody thinks is the killer is actually in real life played by the guy that played Freddy Krueger in the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. That was a pretty fun <laughs> really? movie. That, that was a pretty fun episode. Victor yeah. Webster, you were in like a really fun episode of Bones that we enjoyed watching just somewhat recently in our current rewatch of the series. Also, Victor Webster is like still making stuff. So good. Yeah. For oh, that's Victor. good. That's actually really good to hear. Yeah. Also, he was in. Wait, hold on, hold the forts. Okay. Three, four, five, six, seven, hold eight, the fort. nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. <laughs> he has been in like thirteen Hallmark original like Christmas yes. movies yes. in the really? last like six years. Yes. Really? Oh, we're yeah. about to do a season two in Victor Webster. <laughs> Dang. Good for you, dude. You know I'm what, so Victor? Glad. We're gonna watch a couple. My wife and I are gonna watch a couple of your Hallmark movies. 
Yeah, go to Sarah. Gonna, Sarah, we we're, have to we're watch gonna this Victor our, Webster films. Our completely like lack of money where our mouth is, and we're going to support you. You should have been the star of a good man, and you should not have had him work with Seagal at all. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> honest to God, man, good for you. I'm glad this guy had yeah, a successful. It career seems like you got like Seagal. a comfy thing going on. I can respect that. Yeah. Oh my god. This movie just made me so angry. It made me so angry the entire time. Wait, wait, wait. Aaron, you said he was in the Scorpion King 3 Battle of Redemption. Did you know that he was also in the Scorpion King 4 Quest for Power? I did. Also, Aaron, did you know that there was a Scorpion King 4? Yeah, <laughs> I did, but I only know that there was a Scorpion King 4 because Victor Webster is in it. Victor Webster, you're my hero, man. Well, and so Force of Execution, Bren Foster was the actual star of that movie. Yes. And he he's barely yeah. even on the poster. You have his silhouette yes. in the that's, reflection that's, of the sunglasses right. of Steven Seagal. Right. Yes. Why do they keep doing this to these poor stuntmen? They deserve more screen time. Hey, they deserve more presence. They if, deserve main character status. Hey, I'm if so you're listening mad. And you are a martial artist slash stuntman who is looking to get into the film industry. And somebody approaches you to act in a Steven Seagal film. I'm not saying don't do it. But I'm saying maybe after the shooting is done, when it's like in the edit bay, if you can get your agent to secretly negotiate that actually you become the main character, <laughs> that is what you should or do. Or like at you least get on the poster. This like yeah, tertiary character status. At the, at the very least, have your you head as given. big as Seagal's on the poster. No, no, no. They should re-edit the movie to make you the main character because it would like, be a better <laughs> movie. You do not it, deserve it this like tertiary character status that you keep getting assigned. So, like Bren Foster in Force of Execution, at least his silhouette is on the poster. Victor Webster is nowhere to be found on the poster for a good man. There's right. also I a tank in the, the background. Main character. There's also a tank the in the background of a good man. There is no tank in this movie. Doesn't have. There's like an Abrams Wait, really? tank in the background. Oh, that's even worse. They I will even put a the non-existent tank on oh the poster my God. and they will put the main character. <laughs> what is this poster? <sighs> Hold on. It's oh, horrible. horrible. Hold on. Oh, hold on. It's horrible. What is this poster? <laughs> it is Seagal, but very clearly not Seagal's body. No, no, no. In like wait. a war wait, zone. Wait, 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 wait. With pause, mountains? Pause, like, pause, like pause, pause, snowy pause, mountains pause, behind pause, it? pause. We will get back to it. Hans, pause. Hans, Aaron, did you notice watching this movie when they like changed the like aspect ratio of the camera output to make Seagal look skinnier, Hans, Aaron. Oh did you my know gosh! This? No, did you no. notice? This? No, I didn't. I did when not. When you were watching this movie, did it ever look like things were like weirdly skinnier than they should be? No. no. Okay. I just, I mean, I just chalk up anything like that to like no one on this movie cared, so they probably just accidentally hit a button in After Effects and just didn't care about it after that. <laughs> okay, when I was watching this movie. Oh it appeared God. to me, I'm not saying this is 100% what happened, but it appeared to me that they would like literally adjust like the width but not the height of the image in certain shots, not all of them, but in certain shots with Seagal to make it look like he's skinnier than he is. That's incredible, but not surprising. Anyway, Dude, back to the poster. This poster, it's nothing in this poster has anything to do with the movie. There's no. snowy mountains behind no. him this where, poster, where they were is, in the flashback. This is for a different movie. And where they were in the flashback and where they are in the like movie proper has no like Alps or whatever this is behind them. The smoking scene with the brick building that's behind the Abrams tank or whatever tank. I mean, tank experts would probably tell us we're idiots. That's not an Abrams tank, but it doesn't matter. Behind the tank, that building, not anywhere to be seen in this entire movie. Like the only thing in this poster that has anything to do with the movie at all is Seagal's face plastered onto this body that is not his. I, uh, I'm so mad. I'm just mad. I'm mad. I'm so mad at this movie. It did me dirty. It did you dirty. It did. did what's his it face? Definitely did Victor I'm sorry. Webster dirty. Definitely, that's that's who. I'm sorry. I it's actually remember. very funny when you names. look at this poster. Like, it's like they were given a hypothetical Photoshop challenge to make a poster that had as little to do with the movie as possible, while still containing like kind of at least some things. While from the still movie. like legally allowed yeah. to be attached to the movie. <laughs> yeah. This is ridiculous. I'm so angry. <laughs> like 90% of the individual ele- the uh, 90% of the Photoshop layers that make up this poster are not in the movie. Okay, real quick though. If you've listened, if you're listening to this podcast, 
there's like some theme music that we play that I, I took like a royalty free little song online and I added in some Seagal quotes and that's the theme music you hear like every intro. Whenever he <laughs> says at the what's happening that happens like right before the drop. What's happening? Which I think is actually a fucking killer edit that I made. It oh, is. it's phenomenal. I'm very it's happy. Perfect with that. edit. What's happening? <laughs> that drop. what's happening perfect. comes from a good man because he sees this woman trying to get into her apartment and he's and he says, Hey, let me break into your apartment for you. And she says, Yes, this is like my seven year old sister. And he says, What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> To this little girl. Okay, a little girl. <laughs> Have happened? you ever greeted a small child with what's happening? Well, also, like later in the movie, he knocks on their door and it's just the little girl, like home alone. Yeah. Uh, because they live in like dire straits and so yeah. Lena needs to work all the time. And so the little girl's home alone and she looks through the peephole and you see Seagal there just like an old man sweaty standing in front of the door (laughs) and i have in my notes if you ever see a man outside your home looking like that do not open the door like when i was a kid my parents literally trained me this was when i would answer like oh yes my parents are home but they can't come to the door right now like do you want me to take a message like (laughs) it's this it's really funny because this is where we didn't we didn't talk about this but like they were locked out of their apartment so he broke into their apartment for them and then he comes back later with a new lock, he, Seagal, the neighbor who broke into their apartment for them, came back while the while the sister was at home, the, young, the older sister wasn't home, and it was just the younger sister at home, came back, the younger sister let him in, and he installed for them a new lock in their door. They live in, like, a building. There's no yeah, like super, there's no landlord, there's no... No, Seagal just went out and bought them a new lock so that she didn't have to have a new key made for the lock that was already in the door. It's I know it's a small detail, but it just adds it's to the strange the list of reasons why it's just like this movie. I hate this movie, but I honestly, I, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I be think honest. this movie hates me more than I hate this movie. Do you see what Ooh. I think? We're in the new like a new and hateful era of Seagal, like. I said this with maximum conviction that this movie hates me and I hate it back. Yeah. I think I think that's gonna be the theme. Like I'm feeling yeah. that that's just gonna be the norm yeah. now. I think you're right, honestly, because I that's the only thing that I can come up with from this is that the, I think this movie hates me and I'm fine I I wasn't thinking on that same wavelength as you last time, mm-hmm. but you're absolutely right. Thank you. Oh, I feel so A vindicated prophet before his time. So <laughs> A week before. <laughs> Yeah, I just yeah these I yeah the first like thirty movies we hate the next thirty movies hate us. It's <laughs> the ask not who the bell tolls the bell tolls for thee. Yep. So we got we hit my line and my star rating. Zach, I think you gave us mine rating. was one star, and I'm a snatch every mother birthday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Aaron, what about you? Uh, one star. There is no darkness without light, but there is light. <laughs> darkness <laughs> uh what should you watch instead hans oh just oh. about anything you know what though because and i i didn't think about this ahead of time so i'm sorry but i'm glad you asked me first because i'm absolutely gonna steal it zach said that two months after this movie came out yeah john wick That's, came out. i was and i was hoping you wouldn't say it because i was gonna steal it John i'm gonna Wick, say john Wick, e, but you know what abs i think in this scenario you should absolutely be i think we should all three be able to say the exact yeah. same movie because i know we're thinking yeah, it. okay ready you should absolutely go watch john wick but with the caveat that you start john wick chapter one at i believe it is 15 minutes in yeah it's 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 pretty close to that. it's like 14 37 or something like that like you something can... like that with the knowledge that some jackass broke into his house and stole his car and killed his dog but you should not That's, watch yeah. the part where he kills his dog it's pretty start pretty. the movie 15 minutes in actually i'm gonna i, I just want to be different that's I'm how i'm gonna be contr- different i'm not i'm even just a contrarian that hear me out start with john wick four Watch it backwards. Mm. Watch John Wick three backwards. <laughs> watch John Wick two backwards. Watch John Wick one backwards. But just stop it with fifteen minutes left to go at the end of the film. Oh. I'm gonna have to go ahead and recommend that you don't do that. No, that's probably that awful. Sounds awful. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you should watch all the Star Wars movies in the correct order, which is four, five, one, two, three, six. Oh my God! Good lord! Well, you should watch the Star Wars <laughs> movies. Hold on, hold on. And then, if you want to, you can watch seven, eight, and nine. 
<laughs> watch Rogue One, mm. four, five, holiday special, six, <laughs> one, two, three, Clone Wars, because that's like one of the few I actually got to see in theaters, even though it's not a very good movie. Oh, the, no, it's trash. It's really bad. And then but, the, watch... but the TV show is really good. And then don't watch, watch seven. And then you can watch eight and then kind of get drunk and just kind of half pay attention to nine. Yeah, you don't have to actually watch nine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't build on seven or eight like at all. So yeah. actually don't watch the Star Wars movies. Those are dumb. Don't watch Star Wars. That's a waste of your time. Play <laughs> the Lego <laughs> Star Wars video games. Oh, yeah. You can you'll, still... you'll basically get the same impression. Yeah, you can still speak intelligently <laughs> about Star Wars if you just play the Star Wars Lego movies. Like, yeah, Star honestly, Wars Lego if you play all games. those, you know enough. You're fine. You don't. Yeah. You, 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 you don't have to get involved in any of the online toxicity. Yeah. A it's good man, curse. more like friend. a good boar. <laughs> no, that's not good. Neither a good man, Seagal more like a bad movie. man, because he's actually a bad man in this movie. He's not very good. <laughs> more like a good man. Justice for Victor Webster. Yeah, a, yeah. a good man, more like a good excuse for a movie. Bad excuse for a movie. <laughs> that's no. Uh, that's that's true. I'm sorry. I ruined it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hans, he tried so a good hard man, and really broke his mind. <laughs> a good man, more like I wish I watched a different movie starring Victor Webster. <sighs> okay, well, this has been a good man. <laughs> the 2014 film, ostensibly, but shouldn't star Steven Seagal. Yeah. Join us next week for Absolution, also known as the Mercenary Absolution of 2015 oh, Romanian action thriller to. filmed, also directed by Keone Waxman. We're so and close. ostensibly starring Steven Seagal, but. Oh. It shouldn't. It's sh- sorry. Uh, Absolution starring Vinnie Jones and Byron Man. Hey, Byron Man's back. Byron okay. Man's back. Oh, Byron really? Man's back. Okay. Join us okay. next week well, for Byron Man's 2015 film Absolution, which also for some reason has Steven Seagal in it. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Uh, Stop I talking, really everybody. This, this is, is the, the end of the theme, podcast. Man. We're done recording. Stop it. Bye. That means one of us has to. Actually, hello, listener of this podcast. If you, here's what you should do. <laughs> if you have somehow made it this far and not watched a Star Wars movie, you should play either Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga or Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. Like any Lego Star Wars game, it's fine. Yeah. And find an online argument where people are like arguing about like, oh, Luke shouldn't have done this or whatever. Like find the most toxic, like vitriolic, like Star Wars film <laughs> argument you can find and be like, well, I haven't seen the movies, but I play the Lego games and here are my thoughts <laughs> because it doesn't matter what you say, you are a hero in my eyes. Like you are literally like the greatest human being that the universe has created.